Good evening, my fellow YouTubers. Now, I'm going to be doing a short series of videos in which I'm going to look at the various arguments for the existence of God and critically analysing them and offering arguments for and against and kind of drawing my own conclusion at the end. Although, knowing my style, my own conclusion will be fairly obvious before it's continued. Now, this is one I've touched on in a previous video to a YouTuber by the name 530, also known as Chad Elliott. Now, incidentally, Chad, it's been quite a few days now and you still not got back to me, so I'm guessing you don't want that debate. Coward. Anyway, on to the main point of today's video, which is the cosmological argument. Now, for those of you unsure, the cosmological argument, also known as the first cause argument, posits that everything in the universe has a cause, and that the universe itself must have a cause by that logic. So if we go back far enough through all the causal chain, we will find the cause of the universe, which is the first cause. And since it is the first cause, it must therefore be uncaused, because otherwise we could follow the chain back ad infinitum and never find the original cause, because everything would be explainable as a cause. And it is then argued that that cause is the supreme being and the creator of all there is. So to take it logically, of course, it sounds logical. It plays on our sense of logic. In the book, the book of atheist spirituality, Andre Comte Sponville says that this is the argument of apologetics that is the most convincing to him because it plays on logic. And he says that it plays on our fear that we would not want an infinite regress, therefore an, an endless causal loop of never finding a beginning to the universe. But then he also argues why does the universe necessarily need a reason? Why does it follow along the conventional lines of logic? And Julian Baggini, in his book, Atheism, a very short introduction, calls the argument a horrible argument because it makes this general assumption that everything follows along a cause. Both make the point, however, that what we get when we argue a cause is we reach eventually the first cause, unless you believe in the infinite loop of things. This first cause cannot be argued to be a god, given the logic of the argument. The logic of the argument merely states that there must be a first cause to the universe. Not that that first cause is a god. It could have been anything. You can argue anything calls the universe. God doesn't have to fit in those parameters. What makes it God is the presupposition. You already assume there is a God. Therefore, when it comes that that is the first cause, it is instantly made your God because that is your life experience. A lot of this is also made a posteriori. It is made looking back at the pattern. We, as humans, like to find patterns in things, some more so than others. And by analysing these patterns, we then work our way back and find that everything has a cause. It might not be that way, but that is the way we've interpreted it because that is the way humans like to analyse the evidence. But let us say, discard all that for a moment. Let us be generous. Let's honour the premise. Let's say that there is a first cause to the universe and it is God. Why then 
is that uncaused? Why are you allowed special pleading on the part of your chosen deity? Why is that particular thing not within the space and time continuum that it created? What is special about this particular creator that leaves it from everything else? If it's not different from everything else, what caused it? Because as we've established, everything has a cause. Why should this be different? And if it isn't different, what caused it? Because then that would be the creator of everything because it created the thing that created the universe. The most important thing, however, is for anyone who attempts to use this to justify the God of their particular book, is it does absolutely nothing to prove your particular God. That's right. I could use this argument for God, Yahweh, Jesus, the flying spaghetti monster, Allah, Brahma, whichever God I wanted, because I am merely assigning a God as the cause of the universe. I'm not saying to anyone that there's definitive proof. I'm merely saying I believe there is a cause to the universe. Therefore, my God was the cause of the universe. It's an argument made on presuppositions, a lot of a posteriori pattern finding, and logical word games to reach its conclusion. I personally find the design argument to be quite weak, but as you'll see when I look at some of the others, logically, it's the one that comes closest to kind of nailing the whole thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is El Presidente Etel. Good night, and may logic and reason guide YouTube.